Hello, I'm Jonathan Smith. I'm the lead pastor at One Church TO, and you're listening to the teaching time from our weekend gathering. We're an imperfect community of over 70 nationalities and five generations who are attempting to follow and shine Jesus in the greater Toronto area. Our vision, it's so simple. We want to help people from all walks of life know God, love people, and in turn, impact our city for good. We've designed these weekends to be meaningful, challenging, and encouraging, and I hope that's what you get from listening. What does it tell us when a Netflix program called Stranger Things is that popular? Uh, You know, I Googled this past week. The video clip said that it's going to a fourth season. There's talk of a fifth season. Uh, Now, let's back up because... I didn't know what Stranger Things program was, and it really is a science fiction series where townspeople in 1980s Indiana inadvertently create a portal into another realm, the upside-down realm, and they find themselves interacting with supernatural powers. The result is enough calamity and horror Uh, to fill 32 32 episodes and counting. What's the big attraction to Stranger Things? And you know what else is having a fresh surge of interest during COVID? Astrology. And do you know what generation is showing the, the greatest upsurge of interest in doing their horoscopes? Millennials. So, so we're not talking about, you know, some early cavemen, humans, superstitiously, superstitiously reaching out to uh, the gods for uh, crop success, military success, or, or, or fertility, or a good afterlife. We're talking 2021. Come on, look around. We, we still practice lots of religions. People still set up idols. They read horoscopes. They're fascinated with zombies. They knock on wood, and at a minimum, they wish one another good luck. What is this apparently insuppressible awareness of a supernatural realm? And what about miracles? Did they really happen? When we pray, Are we really making contact with a supernatural being? What about demons, angels, and heaven? Does it all just go into the category of the metaphysical, the paranormal? Is it all just stranger things? Or is it true that God did make humans different from plants and animals? That he made us so that we can interact with the creator who is invisible and supernatural? Is it true that there is a real devil that lies and deceives and tries to get humans under his evil control and that humans just keep taking the bait one generation after the other? Well, the Bible's main message is that there is an invisible, supernatural creator God giving humans a second chance to enter the life that he originally created for them. And here's the thing, no one ever sees God. He's a spiritual being. He's above the material world that he created. Now, every once in a while, uh, God seems to let people have a glimpse into the invisible realm. I've got an example for you from the old part of the Bible and the new part of the Bible, divided between the time before Jesus arrived and then the New Testament after Jesus arrived. Let's, let's look at the Old Testament, uh, millennia before Jesus arrived, all right? When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early in the morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Scary stuff. So he asked Elisha, oh, my master, what are we to do? Do not be afraid, Elisha answered, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them, the enemy. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw that the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Strange? 
We're not done yet. <laughs> so we got stranger things here. All right, a lot of people uh, maybe tuning in today and uh, are with us in this gathering. Uh, a lot of people, they, 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 they know about a Jesus of history, but everything about Jesus, they keep in the category of the natural. There's his wonderful teachings, um, his example, his uh, crucifixion, people go around wearing crosses, um, his impact on human history by starting Christianity, but then they, they dismiss the supernatural Jesus. All those accounts of uh, healing and miracles and angels, they're, they're, they're just in the same category as stranger things. And so when we read where we're going to look now in Mark's gospel, an account of where Jesus was introduced into public ministry by being baptized by John the Baptist. All right, here's, here's what it would be if you just took out all the supernatural. One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals. Do you see it? It's just, that's, you take the supernatural out and that's historical record of what happened to Jesus. But if you read the, the original documents, here's what you see. One day Jesus came from Nazareth, Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water... He saw the heavens splitting apart. Well, that's strange. And the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go out into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals and angels took care of him. Do you see the invisible realm? You, you've got God's voice from heaven, God's spirit leading, Satan tempting, and angels show up to help. Welcome to a series called Stranger Things. Today's chapter one. Today we're going to see how you and I have the potential to see into that supernatural, invisible unseen realm. Because as a human being, you were created not just with five senses. This explains why there's so much interest in the paranormal, metaphysical, and the supernatural, and even religious. We're created with an ability to make connection with a real supernatural God in a realm that we can't see with these physical eyes. We're designed to see things that Stranger things and horoscopes and religion and good luck could never ever get to. Jesus actually had a word that he used in his conversations about this strange realm. Uh, he, he spoke in the Greek language of his time, and, and, he, and here's the word he used epurania. Epurania. All right. Here's one of the first times that Jesus uses it. He's having this conversation with this uh, religious leader who is wondering, maybe Jesus is the Messiah? He, he, he's got to come from God. We see him doing the supernatural. And, and, and you know, when he comes to secretly see Jesus, doesn't want his peers to know that he's uh, you know, interested in Jesus. And so uh, the first thing that Jesus says to him is that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Notice, see the kingdom of God, unless they are born again. And, and Nicodemus, he, you know, he says, that's ridiculous. That's, talk about strange. Uh, a fully grown physical man being reborn physically? Uh, and Jesus explains right away, I'm not talking about the physical realm. I am talking to you about, and there's that word again, epiraneous. I'm talking to you about a heavenly realm. Now, in the very same conversation he has with Nicodemus, Jesus also uses a word to identify the visible, the physical realm. 
It's cosmos. God so loved the world. Well, if you that word in the Greek world that we translate is cosmos in the Greek language that Jesus was speaking in. So ready for this? What was true for Nick is true for you. That spiritual part of you can be born again spiritually so that you can actually see this upper neurai, this kingdom of God. And now maybe you're, you're just sort of responding like Nick did when he came to see Jesus. That's too strange for me. <laughs> that was Nick's initial response before he opened up to it. But, you know, maybe you're saying that's too strange for me. I'll just stick with my religion, uh, good luck, and astrology. You know, maybe, maybe you're of that frame of mind. But what are you going to do then when you keep reading the Bible and you see that Jesus' first followers actually saw Jesus bring the supernatural epineurai to earth right before their eyes. Jesus does supernatural miracles. He heals people who are sick. He frees people from a devil's evil powers where the devil's trying to control and damage people. And then Jesus one day says to his followers, you watch me, now it's your turn. You go and teach people, but also do the supernatural things that you have seen me do. Heal people, help people supernaturally. And they come back so excited. Let's read about it. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to Jesus, Lord, Even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he's told them. Look at this. I saw, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. (laughs) And then he says, look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in. There's that, that, that heaven, that realm again. You see it? Jesus instructs his followers to help people in two realms, to operate both in the cosmos and the eperonai realms. He says, go into all the cosmos, teach, feed, uh, free the oppressed in my name. But he also says, go and heal the sick, set people free from invisible powers of evil. And later, when he empowers them with his Holy Spirit, uh, he, he, he tells them, you know, you receive that power. The Spirit of God will be there to help you when you help people. He will help you supernaturally. And so that's exactly what they do. It's recorded in the book of Acts. Right after the Gospels, the accounts of Jesus, comes the book of Acts. And it's all about first century followers of Jesus operating, listen to me, not just in the natural, not just doing food distribution. They did a lot of that, helping people's needs, but supernaturally helping people. And they got a lot of religious and political pushback for it. Look at what happens when the apostle Peter is put into prison because the religious powers are threatened because so many thousands of people are following uh, their message about Jesus. All right, so it says this. So Peter was kept in prison. So that's what's happening in the physical realm. But it says, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. How many know that? That's a epineurai. That's, that's an activity in the heavenly realms. So what happens when the heavenly realms disrupt the earthly realm? What's happening in the world? Peter in prison. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial. Listen to this. I'm reading further that story from Acts. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. He must have been a sound sleeper. (laughs) Quick, get up, he said. Watch this. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Acts is a book about the first followers of Jesus traveling to tell others the good news that the Messiah has come, Jesus has come, and watch this now, they have the constant help of the supernatural Holy Spirit and the occasional help of 
beings called angels. Now, here, here's what you notice about the angels when you read in the book of Acts. They, they, they show up for two main purposes. They show up with a message to connect people to Jesus. Remember, uh, if you read in Acts, you can see it. An angel tells Philip, a follower of Jesus, to talk to a spiritually hungry uh, Ethiopian government official. And then another time, an angel connects Peter with a spiritually hungry uh, Gentile called uh, Cornelius. And so with a message to connect people, but also to care and protect people who are following Jesus. We, we just saw how we did that for Peter. We got him out of prison supernaturally. It's, it's just a great story. It's a funny story in parts. You've got to read it in the book of Acts. But Remember Jesus before Pilate? He, he says, Pilate said, don't you know I have the power to execute you? And Jesus says, you don't have any power. He said, don't you know that this is, I'm, I'm going through with the crucifixion. It's my choice. At any time I want to, I can call on my father and he will send thousands of angels. Jesus wasn't using a metaphor. He was talking about these beings in the heavenly realms that could intersect into the physical realm and bring help to humans. Now, those are just a few examples, but, but, but listen, get this. Do you know how many times the New Testament, the New Testament, forget the old part of the Bible, just since Jesus came, talk about interacting with Jesus and Christians, the New Testament talks about angels 165 times. And that begs the question, do, do angels get involved in uh, human beings' lives today? Well, have I ever had an angel experience? Well, in my now uh, 65 years, only once that I know of. Now, Scripture says that sometimes we entertain angels and we're not even aware of it. But uh, it was during my last year of high school. And uh, the next year I was going to Bible college. I, I sensed that God wanted me to give my life to help people like you come to know Jesus and grow in Jesus. And... Uh, but I was uh, leaving work in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and going to where we lived, uh, about 15 kilometers away, uh, driving my motorbike, cheap transportation at the time, and uh, going to, uh, to Herring Cove, and, and you went to Herring Cove on Purcell's Cove Road. It was a dark night, it was so foggy. But I, I was very familiar with the road, and so I remember I came around the corner, was going up the straight way, if you know it, right by York Redoubt that's there, and, 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 and the fog was so thick, I just couldn't see, and, but what I did see right before me was my motorbike headlight reflecting off of something right in front of me. And uh, later on, I realized a car had backed out of uh, a road right beside, and I know right where that road is, back right out in front of me. I didn't know it was there, and they just stopped in the road. They didn't see me, and I was coming right towards them. You said, did your life flash before you, Pastor Keith? No, I, I, <laughs> this happened in a millisecond. I didn't have time to say, oh, God, help, or for any life to flash before me. Uh, you know, all 17 years of it or whatever, however old I was, all I recall in that millisecond reflection of my headlight on the side of this car that was in front of me was suddenly this swoosh sound. And I was just lifted up in the air with my motorbike. And the next thing I knew, I was on the other side safely driving down Purcell's Cove Road towards home, wondering what in heaven's name just happened. No, 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 that's not a scene from chapter two of Stranger Things. Hebrews explains what happened to me. Therefore, angels are only servants. Spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. I had an intervention from a real but unseen realm that entered into the physical realm. And it's all around every one of us, that realm that Jesus talked about. Now, Jesus, here's where we've been so far. Jesus operated in those two realms, right? He cared for people physically. He made sure they were fed. But he also did supernatural for them. 
Then he trained his followers to live for him in both of these realms. Now let's get to you and me, all right? Jesus calls his followers today to live for him in both realms, to be to, in the cosmos, to be that love army in our world, to do unignorable good in his name, but also to operate in the epurania, to, to, to pray to a supernatural God with faith that miracles could happen and to heal the sick, to set people free of the invisible powers of evil. And he says, I'll be right there with you to the ends of the earth. Now, what, when we do that, he explains in the Bible, what we're actually doing is turning our strange world right side up, <laughs> where they can do life the way that they were designed to do with their creator God. All right, so two areas that we're gonna look at before we pray. All right, here's the first one. And you can practice this going forward. Live for Jesus in both realms, not just one. Both the cosmos and the epirania. Live for Jesus. You know, watch this. Churches that get off track are those churches when they just, they want to live for Jesus in just one realm. Just follow his example, follow his teachings, do social justice, do great humanitarian things. And then others who just, sometimes, you know, they call them charismaniac. You know, they just, they just get all, matter of fact, right in Bible times, you see uh, the apostle Paul writing a letter to the church in Corinth and, and, and talk about getting off track with the spiritual ep epirania realm, you know, they're saying, we have lots of prophecies, Paul. We have lots of praying in tongues. We're super spiritual and we're proud of it. The only thing we're missing is love. <laughs> and he says, well, then you're missing what's most important. Without love, you guys ain't nothing. And then in, in the first, the, the first church that Jesus calls out in the last book of the Bible. So they've been having church for decades now. It's in the book of Revelation. He calls them out for trying to operate in the cosmos, the world, without operating in the Epirania realm. Jesus says, you know, you've got a lot of charitable good works. You're persevering in those good works, but you're not listening to the Holy Spirit. And Jesus corrects them and he says, church, return to your first love and listen Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you as a church. Do you see it? Churches get off track when they go on one way and not the other. You know, pre-COVID, I met with uh, an insurance broker about my uh, car insurance and, uh, you know, trying to get a good deal. And, uh, and, and you know what he said at the end? He says, you know, I know about your church. He says, how do you guys have so many young people? And, and you're growing. You have people, new people coming to your church. He says, I go to a church. He said, we have a great building. We have finances. We have a great organization, but we're declining. We have no youth, no children, no new people coming in. And here's what he's asked me. What are you doing that's so different from what we're doing? I wanted to, you know, sort of tell them that they're, they were probably doing a lot of good things in the community. They were operating in the cosmos, but they were not operating in the Epirania. He, he was speaking of so many churches in Canada that, that right now only operate in one of the two realms that Jesus calls his followers to operate in. They, they've reduced church to a charitable organization they do church services, they do some social issues, they do some humanitarian work, and God bless every church that does those things. But they, they stop there, they engage in the cosmos, but not the heparania. It's like Jesus explained to the woman at the well in John chapter 4. He said, you know, religious uh, knowledge and practice and doctrine is not enough. He said, God is spirit so those who worship him must worship him, not just in truth, but in spirit, in spirit and in truth. Someone said it this way. They said, all truth and no spirit, <laughs> the church dries up. All spirit and no truth, the church blows up. But where there is the spirit and truth, we grow up. Yeah, that's true for the individual Christian. You know, last weekend when Pastor Jonathan 
was uh, with church leaders just uh, sharing that vision of the five bold moves over the next number of years. Oh, my heart just was so excited because we're, we, we, it's all about having a vision to be the church in the cosmos, but with the help of Jesus, doing what Jesus wants so we have the help from the Eperania realm, the kind of vision that Jesus can empower from the heavenlies. Now, most of the uh, New Testament churches, they're written to because they got off track in one way or the other. You know, when Paul, uh, the apostle, writes to a church in Ephesus, now in uh, contemporary nation of Turkey, he says this, he starts, listen, it just sounds so, how do you say that word again? Epurania-ish. <laughs> he says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. In the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. And then he goes on to say, Christ is seated at the place of authority before the Father in the heavenly realms. And you as his followers, you're seated with Christ in those heavenly realms. And lots of the first part of the letter to the Ephesians is about living for Jesus in the Eperania. But the last chapters are all about living for Jesus in the cosmos, our families, our workplaces, our conversations. And do you know how Paul says, he instructs Christians, he says, you know how you live for Jesus in the world, in your relationships, in the workplace, in your conversations? You live for Jesus in the Eperani at the exact same time. He says this, watch this. Have you ever noticed this? What does he mean by this? He says, you know, you, you husbands and wives, he says, you know, submit to one another. And then he says, out of reverence for Christ. It's always with the heavenly realm, always before Jesus. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Parents, bring your children up in the instruction of the Lord. Employees, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord. What you're doing, so practical. Some people don't even think of Jesus being with them at work or in their, in their relationships, but here he is. Employers, you're accountable to your master in heaven. You you, you live for Jesus in the world by living for Jesus in the heavenly realms at the exact same time. Now, you know, some people say, well, you know, heavenly realms are all Jesus and it's all good and it's all wonderful. Why do you have to say live for Jesus in the Eperania? Because, listen to me, it's not all good guys in the Eperania. <laughs> Remember Pastor Jonathan, when he began our Titanium series this past summer, he used this verse, for we are fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Not against just flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the Epinura. Yeah, yeah, they're there. What are examples of how a follower of Jesus is in this fight against this upside-down world in the Eperania? Well, letting our feelings rule. Watch this. He says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not give the devil a foothold. Do you see that? We can go out of Jesus' control when we get angry and go under the devil's control. Uh, I don't know how many times in my following of Jesus years I've had to go and make things right with my kids or with my wife or with some other person because I got angry and I had to make things right because I want Jesus to, to rule not just that church or the spiritual part of my life but my anger, every part of my life. Look, look at where else could we fight against these unseen powers in self-centered conversations? He, Ephesians, he keeps writing them. He goes on, he says this next, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. When people listen to Christians talk with one another, they ought to be able to see that kind of respect and the treatment of each other. And then, not wanting God's best for someone. Watch this. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. How could a Christian grieve the Holy Spirit of God? Well, if they have and they tolerate, they don't get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Do you know what malice is? Malice is when 
we want wrong for someone. We want things to go wrong. We don't want God's best for someone. And then he goes on to say, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Treat people the way that Jesus treats you. And he says, when you do that, that's where the power is. When our relationships and our conversations and our feelings are are ruled by Christ, when we treat other people the way Jesus treats us, then he can give us power from the Eperania, power from the heavenly realms. We, we give space then for the Spirit to help us in our marriages, our parenting. We, we, we go to pray for our kids at night and we're not just saying, you know, big and small, God bless us all. We're, 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 we're just knowing that there's something powerful that's there when we pray together and we're helping our children understand that there's, there's a heavenly realm where powerful uh, help is there from Jesus for them, you know? And, and then we create conditions for the unity of the Spirit because you know why a lot of people in churches, God cannot bless them even though he wants to? Well, King David makes this point thousands of years ago. He says, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. He describes it. And then he says, for there, where there's unity, the Lord bestows his blessing. So live for Jesus in both realms. Are you still with me? Live for Jesus in both realms. And secondly, just before we pray now, when you pray, watch out. (laughs) Watch out. Do it Jesus' way, and you'll engage power from heavenly realms. I wonder how many I'm talking to, and you know how to have conversations with God. You know how to just pray through the lists of people that are in your family and on your heart. I, I want to invite you to, you know, because the Bible says in Ephesians, pray with all kinds of prayer. That's what Jesus basically said when he brought us to the Lord's Prayer. He says, have praise and worship. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. But then he said, and pray for your needs. Give us this day our daily bread. But he also said, enter into the Eperania, the heavenly realms. Oh God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom the power and the glory. So, so we pray in the Eperania. Now, that doesn't mean, watch this, because I can hear people, well, I just got to get my prayers just perfect. Then. No, 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 no. Not, listen, remember when Jesus in the Gospels compared the carefully crafted prayer of a Pharisee with the clumsy, uh, brief prayer of a sincere sinner? And and Jesus was saying, you know, you you can have an an articulate, pretty prayer that doesn't even get past the ceiling, let alone get up into the Eperania. But you can have a a messy, clumsy, humble prayer, (laughs) because that's what the guy did, he humbled himself. And and Jesus says that, that, that brings power from the heavenlies. God hears that and he does something on earth. When you pray those kind of prayers, watch out because you'll engage power from the heavenly realms. Pastor Jonathan and I you know, next week we're gonna, I'm going to talk about hearing the inaudible. Hear, today, seeing the unseen. Next week, hearing what you can't hear physically, but you can hear spiritually. Pastor Jonathan and I in this series, when we put it together, the, the heart of stranger things is that your eyes would be open wider than they are right now. <laughs> Whether it's to be born again of the Spirit and, and to move in to prayer and power and to do life with the supernatural uh, help of Jesus by his spirit. We long to see more of the Eperania in Jesus' church in Canada post-COVID. You know, and that will happen only when the church sees itself as being more than a charity. Look at Ephesians again. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the Eperania, the heavenly places. This was his his eternal plan. It happens. This will happen when pastors and teachers and evangelists see themselves as more than clergy. These are the gifts 
that Christ gave to the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. It happens when people who are in Christ's church see themselves as so much more than attenders. They're being equipped to minister to other people. You know, at our annual members meeting this weekend, we're going to celebrate an amazing year. Despite being under the shadow of a worldwide pandemic, God's people in this city have been reaching, helping, serving, giving, praying, baptizing, building up the church with his, which is the body of Christ and made that happen even more and more until we come to such a unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord. Oh, listen, we're going to, at the annual members meeting, affirm three new deacons in the church. Deacons, listen, if we're going to have that kind of church, deacons are more than board members of a charitable organization. They were birthed in the Acts church to support pastors, teachers, and evangelists so they could equip God's people so that together they could fulfill the mission that is the mission of Christ's church. Oh, as followers of Jesus, why not have the help of the Holy Spirit? When you, you, listen, to see that when you witness to someone about Jesus, do you know it's more than a religious dialogue? When you witness to someone about Jesus and the Holy Spirit is there, you're pushing back darkness in the heavenlies and you're lighting up the way for them to see who Jesus really is. Every time you do unignorable love army good with a church in the name of Jesus in our community, you are helping open the eyes of people who don't know Jesus to the supernatural love of Jesus. Every time you serve as a volunteer, and as so many of you have in this past year, you're helping advance the reality of the heavenly realms where Jesus rules. Every time you humble yourself and pray, listen to me, God's kingdom comes in the cosmos even as it is in the Epirania. Sounds like a good time to pray. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, we want to go way past stranger things to your spiritual reality. I pray for those that have not been born again spiritually, that as they just say, Jesus, I know you love me. You gave your life for me. I need your life. I need your forgiveness. Lord, just, I pray that as they, they just ask questions and find out more or open their hearts to you, I pray that you would open their eyes to the life that you want for them, I pray. And it's an everlasting life. And for those that are already following you, Lord, I pray that we uh, as a church would be like the New Testament church at its, at its finest, that we would be unified, moving more and more forward, seeing what's really important to you, Lord, and live for you in our world with more and more help from the Epirania. Help that happen even during this series, I pray. Thank you, Lord, that when we pray, something better than strange happens. <laughs> Supernatural good happens. May it happen right now for people that I'm praying for, Lord, just as they reach out their hearts to you. A supernatural God. May, may some of them experience supernatural peace, peace that passes all understanding. May some have joy, <laughs> when they shouldn't, <laughs> but it's joy originated from the Holy Spirit. May they have freedom and healing. May people have correction. May people have humility. May they have the unity of the Spirit. We pray that, Lord, we'd have a unity that is not manufactured at a human level, but it's for the sake of Jesus, and so we have unity of the Spirit. I pray that people would be delivered from evil, and I pray that every one of us would have a greater awareness of your presence, Lord. Lord, what we're praying is that you would rule not just the cosmos, but that you would rule the heavenly realms. Your kingdom come on the cosmos as it is in the Epirania, we pray. In Jesus' name, can you say amen with me? Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening. If you found this helpful, we hope you join us at one of our campuses if you're in the GTA for a weekend gathering. If you're listening from somewhere else in the world, we'd encourage you to join us at onechurch.to slash live.
We believe everyone can be a part of what Jesus is doing, both in our community and in our city. So if you'd like to connect with us at a deeper level, visit us at onechurch.to slash next steps. See you next time. Thank you.